cream being good and my bad beat. <laughs> What's up? It is Bailey with Basically Bailey's Best. I'm being a little more quiet today because I'm in the sunroom. I'm in like a whole different room. All these cords are like tied up so janky so that Maeve doesn't just like choke herself. So the sunroom has turned into basically like a dedicated playroom. This was our kind of like dining room area before we got new carpet before Maeve was born. And now it has essentially just turned into legitimately just a playroom. There's a huge bench here with like dinosaurs and stuff in there. I um, went to church and I have makeup on. Look at that, look at that. So, you know, I had to vlog because I'm wearing real clothes, I have makeup on, and I have some sanity. Thank you, church. Thank you, church. I'm just gonna dive right into it. There are some small, realistic, practical ways that I take care of myself because 2020 was a super hard year and I was postpartum and I was not taking care of myself and you are the only person who can know how to take care of yourself. People can help you, they can bring you food, they can tell you that you stink and you need to take a shower, but it's up to you to get the self-care products or read the book or get the journal, whatever. You're going to hear all these things, okay? I've got some notes right here because I get off on a tangent. You know, I'd be happy getting off on my tangents. Number one, journal with Jesus. Of course, I didn't bring my journal. Two journals that I'm popping up on the screen right here. One was from last year. It is a pink linen journal. And the paper was like thick enough to where my pens didn't bleed through it. And I'm always like a right on the front and the back side because I don't want to waste it. And the second one that I got is from this year. It's really pretty. It's nice. It's a little bit on like the cheaper side from like the linen one that I got. Um, and it's kind of like puffy on the top. And the pages are fine. I definitely like the pink linen one better, but I'm not mad at the second one. I journals are letters to god prayer requests um basically like a diary of things that i'm going through where i'm like having a mental breakdown or i feel like i'm not having an okay day or when i'm having a great day like i just go there anytime any place um i used to when we left the house <laughs> um i used to bring it with me everywhere because i would just want to journal and i was using that kind of as a crutch to talk to God and now I feel like this year I'm more like apt to just like talk to God through the Holy Spirit and like use the Holy Spirit to like just it, instead of waiting to write a prayer request down in my journal I will just like say it in my head and pray about it later so it's just like a more like fluid relationship with Jesus so journal with Jesus Got me through a lot of stuff. I've been doing that for probably like five years now. I should go through my old journals. Going to church in person. I don't know what, you know, people are okay with, but here in Kentucky, they have like a mask mandate. It is stay home. It is schools constantly getting shut down all the time. It is just constantly chaos, and I'm, which I'm sure it is for every part of the world. We decided that we were gonna go to church in person. So Maeve goes to the nursery and Emma goes to kitchen church so one i get a break from the kids two i get to be out in socialization and like see people which is definitely like my soul language community and connection to people and then three i actually get to like spend time with my husband outside of like wrangling the kids and four i get to my cup to be filled like i am being filled instead of constantly giving out and it's definitely helped it's socializing Maeve it's re-socializing Emma it overall this is probably like our fourth week in a row that we've gone and it is um beginning to be like a staple again so we would watch just online on Sundays and Emma would watch her kids church but it's just not the same it's just not the same go to church in person if you can if you're able number three <laughs> let me just show you personal development okay personal development i have so many books on personal development okay but i also want to <laughs> let me let you guess piggyback off of jesus is personal development through bible studies so i have a page that i am running with another girlfriend called sisters at the table i'll link it below uh, for Instagram and it is a Bible study that we are running. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. Hold on. Let me get back to it And it's from well-watered women It is about the book of Esther and it breaks things down not in like character sense But it's very historical and it's like to find the fingerprints of God So like the book of Esther doesn't have 
any mention of God whatsoever, but you can clearly see the fingerprints of God. Finding personal development through these, while also finding personal development through these. Try to make my personal development books uh, like very Jesus driven, but my kind of life philosophy is that I'm old enough to have a little bit of discernment and I can like take things with a grain of salt with the advice that I'm being given. Like I explain it to Emma like this, like I put things through a Jesus filter. So like, you know, life is your coffee grounds and it's just got a bunch of stuff in there, but whatever comes out, you can either get a bunch of coffee grounds that are through there if you're not filtering things and Jesus is your filter and then you get the yummy coffee at the end if you filter things correctly. Nobody wants coffee grounds in their coffee. I have linked these to buy, but obviously check your library. I literally got, I, I got this one as a gift from my Beachbody coach and then all of these I rented from the freaking library it's free and if you're a local library here in Kentucky they have free audiobooks so I've listened to you are a bad a and you are a bad a making money on audiobook for free I have been loving it's by Bob Goff it's called dream big and this is my first book from Bob Goff. And at first I was like, man, he is really cheesy. But if you know me at all, you know that I like cheesy. I love Hallmark holidays. I love cheesy love stories. I love because it's just like inspiring and happy. And I'm all about the happy. I'm the type seven, right? And it, But even for me at first, I was like, mm, he's a little bit cheesy for me. But the more I've read it, the more I'm like, this dude is just so in love with God that he genuinely is this happy. Like... He's genuinely this happy. Um, so I really like Bob Goff. I've heard awesome things about um, Everybody Always. And if you can tell from this book, like it's worn. Like it's worn and it's from the library. So this is another Bob Goff book. And I'm reading this one. I don't know how I feel about it. I didn't want to read it. I didn't want to, but I'm going to because I've had very mixed reviews on this book from a Christian perspective because, and then you know, again, this past year, I don't keep up with this stuff. I just heard it on a podcast that they got, her and her husband got divorced or something. And I'm like, why is that a big deal? Like, I know it's a big deal, but like, why is that a big deal? And apparently they had like a bunch of marriage podcasts and stuff together. I don't know, I'm rambling. I'm reading this for myself because I've heard a ton of mixed reviews on it and I wanna check it out for myself and not judge it off of someone else's perspective and again i'm gonna put everything through the jesus filter so i think why a lot of people don't like it is because she's very self-helpy um instead of more like redirecting towards jesus so i don't know yet i'm gonna find out i'll let you know i'll come back and i'll come back and report okay close i know this sounds silly okay so if you're anything like me and you're 28 years old and you had a kid at 19 and you've always been thick but like small like petite um, then you have a lot of clothes from high school and you have a lot of hand-me-downs and you have a lot of things that are cute but not necessarily your style and now that you're getting closer to 30, that sounds insane to say, you are needing an update. Like, if, does anyone else feel me? Like, do, do you feel like the closer you get to 30, you're like, I need to change everything. Like, you don't quite fit in the young category, but you don't quite fit in the old category. So you're just in like this beautiful middle part of your life. And it's not even the middle. It's like the beginning of the middle. I had another video, I'll try and insert it here, about my Sheen haul. And I just went and bought a capsule wardrobe. I don't know if you could even call it a capsule wardrobe. That's what I called it. So it was like a color-coded capsule wardrobe. So like my brand colors are the colors that I personally like. It's that light blue. It's that light mauve deepish pink, like a rosy mauve pink. And um, this taupe color right here. And white. Those are the colors that I like. Those are the colors that look good on me. They complement my skin tone. They don't make me feel self-conscious. So why not just like get things that make you feel comfortable? Like it's not about like looking good or being perfect or seeming like you have it all together. Buy the things that you like and that make you comfortable. Budget for it. I know it's hard, especially as women. Like Brett says to me all the time, he's like, oh my gosh, my wardrobe needs a horrible update. Y'all, he said this for three years and he has still yet to update his wardrobe. He works in branded clothing, so he constantly has clothes that are given to him for free which is great for work but then like we'll go to do like a family photo shoot and he'll have like his logo from his company on there because he doesn't have a damn dragon it's all about the accumulation yes you can buy a capsule wardrobe like the sheen haul that i did or like each time that you go out like don't feel guilty about 
ooh, that's my color. Do I like the style of that shirt? Or, ooh, I really like the style of those pants. Does that, is that my color? Like, me personally, I only wear dark colors on the bottom. I don't wear, like, funky patterns or anything like that because I got a big donk. I can't be doing it. Always got to wear stretchy jeans. Like, I literally just bought a pair of jeans for my girlfriend that sold me the jeans that I have on now. They're from, oh my god, I'll just show you. I think I have to back up way more. Like the trendy ones, you know, with, like, all the stuff on it. And then it's got the buttons right here. Mm -hmm. Abercrombie and like I literally never thought I would fit in Abercrombie jeans ever bought a pair of jeans from her and They a different pair and they don't fit because they're not stretchy and I have to wear stretchy So know what you like know what you're comfortable in know what flatters you and go for it. Don't feel bad about it Especially if your ass is postpartum because my body even though I've already had a kid my body still changed I'm not gonna be able to fit in the same clothes not because I'm bigger or because I'm you know, whatever. It's because your body physically changes and you shouldn't feel bad about that. I have to tell myself this all the time. I have to go back and watch these videos because the Lord just speaks through me sometimes and I'll go back and I'm like, why am I not listening to my own advice? Freaking exercise. Okay. Obviously, if you watch me on Instagram, you know, I am a Beachbody coach, but I was not always a coach. I signed up for Beachbody because I could not pay $150 a month for a gym membership. I could not really get out of the house because of COVID, but even, even without COVID, I wasn't leaving the house with a newborn baby and a kid, an eight-year-old that was home from school because everything was shut down. I signed up for Beachbody. I started doing the workouts. Then I started seeing the discounts and how silly it was of me to not be signed up as a discount coach. And then once I had the people like around me that were just like real people, like real women, actual moms, actual ladies that were working the business side, I was like, okay, this seems more legit than I thought it was. I've done other MLMs. I said in my last video that I was, I literally did a whole video, a juicy video about the MLMs that I've done and I literally deleted it because I looked like poop in the whole video. I didn't have the right lighting and I just, I just didn't plan well. Exercise, if you are struggling mentally, like most of us are, you need to freaking exercise straight up. I am doing a nine week program right now. The workouts are literally between 18 and 30 minutes a day and it's only five days a week. You have two rest days a week. It's doable. It takes commitment and it takes work, but it is definitely doable and you shouldn't put it off. You shouldn't use any excuses. You shouldn't not fill up your cup in that sense because of course, you know, I want to look good. Okay. Like what woman doesn't, right? But the main thing that I was working on in the beginning of this journey was strengthening my body back up postpartum because I felt like a bowl of jello. I could barely lift things up. Um, my transverse core and my abdominal core was just like flimsy jello. Like I went to the chiropractor. I'm like working on healing my body and not being ashamed of that. It is a long process, but I'm in the middle of doing it. And then not to mention the confidence that I've gained from it. If I knew that I was working my butt off for nine weeks. I would be so happy because of the confidence that I've gained from me putting in the effort and finishing the program and doing what I set out to do. That in itself is worth working out. So I know sometimes you don't like working out, girl. Me either. Me either. Okay? But you just got to do it. And when you do it, you start gaining momentum. And then the more you do it, the more you want to do it. It's like a bad drug. Another way that I have not felt guilty about taking care of myself is buying cute self-care products for myself. I don't know what to call this. Like face wash or soap or the Billy Razor or uh, these cute earrings or some moisturizer or this makeup. Okay? Straight up. Now, Brett did get that for me for Christmas, but I told him that is the only thing I want for Christmas because I was all out of makeup and my girl Shelby was selling... Um, this Saint, Saint, Saint Mascara Beauty. That's what I'm still call it, whatever. It's super convenient. And, and, hear me out, ladies. We're going to the beach in May. And the fact that I can pack this palette of makeup that is my entire face besides my freaking mascara is bomb.com, one. But two, I don't have to worry about it crushing in the car or Emma dropping my bag and all my makeup cracking. That is freaking exciting to me.
because I crack my makeup all the time. I will drop my blush. Like, I used to use, like, e.l.f. blush. I will drop it, and it'll crack everywhere. Okay, well, my camera recording <laughs> is running out because I'm filling up my card. Because I'm a micro blogger, and I only have a 32 gigabyte card. So, basically, what I'm saying is take care of yourself. Don't feel guilty about it. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Everything's linked below. Um, subscribe, like, turn on the little bell because it lets you know when I make new videos. Okay, bye.